What up, though? Thank God for another day. This is the Your Inner Hero podcast. I'm your host, Rasta White. And if you here listening today, I appreciate you because that means you really been rocking with me. I ain't been doing this podcast for that long, but I see it's a few people out there that's really tuning in. So I truly appreciate you first and foremost. Now, today, you know, I get straight to it. I want to talk about overcoming social anxiety for introverts. Social anxiety, right? So I want to start with a question. Can social anxiety be cured? No. (laughs) I don't believe social anxiety. There's just a magic cure all, something you would never have to worry about after you do X, Y, and Z, right? But what I can tell y'all is as a person who does a lot better with social interactions than I did, I would say a few years ago, or a person who has experienced social anxiety to the furthest extent. Like I've had plenty of awkward moments with people. I had plenty of times where I was overthinking in simple situations where it could have just been a smooth conversation or whatever, but I overthought it and screwed it up. Right. <laughs> but I also had plenty of experiences where conversations went well, conversations went great. It was natural. It just flowed. Right. And I always used to analyze it and be like, what's the difference between that situation and that situation? Right. And I would go through my head like, oh, it was just the other person. Right. I will put blame on the other person and be like, that's probably just ain't a person I connect with. Or that's probably just not a person I relate to well enough to have a natural conversation. But then I started to dig deeper and deeper. And I'm like, hold on. It's people that. I don't even really have a good connection with that. I don't had amazing conversations with. And there's people that now I have a great relationship with that at first things was a little, you know, just a little awkward. You feel me? Cause I was overthinking stuff in the beginning. I might've met them in like a network setting, right? When I was a real estate agent, I might've met them in a high stress environment to where I was just like, you know, on edge, you feel me? Like just sitting there like this, right? I'm drinking this coffee, but this coffee ain't got me on edge because I keep it, I keep it low on the caffeine, you feel me? But I just started to dive deeper and just look at it like, okay, so social anxiety is usually what? When you with somebody, it's usually, it's simple as this. You're around somebody you're uncomfortable with and the conversation don't go normal, right? By definition, right? Normal meaning it's not, you got to think about it. You can't just naturally flow. You see those people out there that's just like they talk to everybody and it's like they have good conversations with everybody. And you're like, dang, he's really good at talking to people or she's really good at talking to people. But you're like, why can't I be like that? And I'm going off on a tangent about it a bit. But I just really want to break it down to y'all to really get an understanding of what it is. Social anxiety and being an introvert is different, Right. Not all introverts have social anxiety. Some introverts, they can care less about it because social anxiety is usually linked to you fear. You fear a person judging you. That's usually what it is. Like from my experience, anytime I screwed up a conversation or something like that, it's because I was worried about how that person was viewing me. I wasn't just being myself. You got the people who they don't care how people view them for real and they just be they self. And guess what? They have good conversations, right? Or you see people in conversations, even me, when I'm not worried about what you think about me because I don't have no interest in you. You got those people too, right? When you out and you have no interest in a person, so you just talk to them freely, you don't think about it. But then they be nervous or they have anxiety and then that anxiety transfer over to you. And it's just so many different situations like that I done thought about in my life that I'm sure you've experienced, too, especially as an introvert who think who think deeply about stuff. Right. So can social anxiety be cured completely? No. But can it be conquered? Yes. What I mean by conquered. First step is what I just did. I started breaking it down what it what it is so you could be aware of what social anxiety is, right? You got to really start analyzing stuff and understand it before you can conquer it, okay? So, when you say I'm just a socially awkward person, you put that on yourself and then you give yourself pretty much a cop out to not improve, right? But you want to improve. When you are here talking to people, you want to find ways to Like, like, again, as an introvert, we want to save our energy. We don't want to talk to people for no reason. We don't want to waste time 
in a conversation that we're not interested in. We don't want to waste time with friends and relationships that we don't find no real value in. That's the core of what being an introverted person is. But social anxiety is when you're just scared to talk to pretty much anybody you don't know. And that's something that we, we got to fix. Can't live like that. It's not a good way to live. Okay. So I'm going to get into some simple tips, as I always do, to help you overcome social anxiety by conquering it, not completely wiping it out. <laughs> okay. I'm going to be real with y'all. Like, that's what this podcast is for. And I, I don't care. Like, if me being real and telling you the truth is. I'm not going to have a giant following. I'm okay with that because I know that speaking in black and white terms and saying this is this, that is that. I know that's that's more attractive, right? People like that normally get more followers and more views because they have this black and white approach with everything. But I'm going to tell you all the real, right? There's no black and white over here. There's no black and white as an introvert. You can become an extrovert. There's no black and white in any area of your life, right? You can always improve. So let's get into them. So one tip I got for y'all is you want to start, you got to just exercise your communication muscle, right? You got to exercise it through what? Repetition, going out, talking to people, asking people what time it is, right? Small things. Now, you don't have to make this your mission to be out here. And every time you out here, you just fishing for a conversation, right? I ain't talking about that. I'm just saying when the opportunities do come your way, because you're an introvert, you don't really want to waste your time. You don't want to. So don't do it. But when you are in these situations where you at a store, right, you just in line and you standing next to a person, they looking at you, you looking at them and y'all kind of both wondering who going to start a conversation and all of that. Those are the moments where you want to learn to start taking control. It ain't got to be nothing crazy. Small talk is what it is. Small talk. And the more you can exercise your communication muscle with small talk, guess what? The less social anxiety you will feel. That's what I learned when I'm starting to get social socially anxious when I'm out, it's because I've been in the house probably for a week or a few days and I haven't been exercising that muscle. And like any other muscle, when you don't use it, what happened? It gets weak. So that's all social social interaction is. It's nothing more than a muscle, right? You got to exercise it. So small talk. Hey, what time is it? Or you see somebody, they y'all waiting in line at a to get a food restaurant. You could just say something simple as they already been there. How long you been waiting on your food? Yeah, I've been waiting on my food for 15 minutes. Really, man? Dang. So is it is it been busy in here today since you got here? Yeah, it's been busy in here, man. And, you know, they said 10 minutes, but now it's 15 minutes. And then you just right. Like, <laughs> if you're an introvert like me, you probably don't like to complain and, and feed in the negative stuff. I really don't. But it's just almost impossible to. If you're going to deal with people, you're going to deal with negative stuff. You're going to deal with bull crap. That's the main thing our brains is programmed to talk about. We don't really want to talk about nothing positive. We feed off negativity. That's just what it is, right? So you don't got to dig deep into none of that stuff. But you could just, man, dang, for real, you've been waiting that long. Man, I hope my food don't take that long. You know, just, just to have that conversation and get that muscle going. And you will notice... When I start my day, right, let's say I've been in the house for three days, right, because I I work from home a lot of times and things like that. Let's say I've been in the house for three days. I go to the grocery store, right, any type of store, and the person is kind of just talking to me. That first conversation, bro, I'm like, I'm just anxious, right, because I haven't talked to nobody in a while, so my muscle is, is fragile right now. I had that conversation. I go throughout my day. Let's say I go, I door dash. Let's say I go to a few stores and I see a few people or whatever. Second conversation, third conversation. Now, as an introvert, I talk about how conversations and people do drain you. But when I go to those places, by the second and third conversation, I don't feel as anxious, right? I might be getting tired mentally because I'm like, I don't want to deal with people. But I'm not on edge, right? I'm having normal flow, flowing conversations. Like, it's just flowing naturally. So the more I do it, I realize, okay, huh, you got to keep doing it. If you don't talk to people and you stay in the house... You're going to be socially anxious everywhere you go all the time. That's just what it is. So that's just that. If you're listening to this, especially up until this point, I want to challenge you. When you go out today or whatever, I want you to just ask a person what time it is. That's it. Ask them what time it is. And if it turns into a conversation, great. Come back to this video. Comment below. Share your experience and tell us how it works. Then I want you to, well, I'm going to just leave you with that for now. I'm going to leave you with that for now. Okay, that was the first tip. Now, another tip is this. You want to learn to get comfortable with silence. It's like, well, okay, Rasta, you telling me 
I need to talk to people more. Now you're saying I should get comfortable with silence. What I mean by that is sometimes you might just be there with a person and you don't want to talk to that person. I'm with you all day. Some people, like I'm not judging them, but it's just sometimes I'm just not interested in talking to you right now because I might have something on my mind, right? I might be focused on because I'm door dashing, right? I might just want to hurry up and get this order and just get out of here. I don't really want to talk to nobody. So you want to learn to, when you're standing with somebody and it's just silent, just be okay with that. It's okay. Silence is not awkward. It's what people do in the midst of silence that make it awkward. If people fidgeting and looking at each other and all of this, it's like, it just make it awkward. Like, it's okay for silence. You ever notice, like, with your family members and your friends and even the person that you're dating, after a while, y'all get comfortable being silent around each other and you wonder why you're comfortable with this person? Because <laughs> when things are silent, there's no pressure to talk. Like, we don't have to always talk. You my brother. I could be sitting around you for two hours. I'm, I'm on my phone doing this. You playing the game. We're not talking. Same thing with your partner. Right? I could be with my wife chilling. Of course, most of the time I want to create conversations, but it's times where it just be silent and we okay with that. We just be chilling, right? So you want to learn to get comfortable with silence in addition to when you are feeling a little like I want to talk to somebody or you do see an opportunity to talk to somebody. Now, tip number three. Now, this one is pretty deep, so I need you to listen to me very carefully. You can get a sales job. <laughs> I know, I know. Introverts hate sales jobs. Introverts hate having to deal with people. Introverts are more task based, meaning you would do better in an office space knocking tasks out rather than dealing with 100 people every single day at work. That will burn you out. But if you can get a sales job for three months, six months, it can really help you get to that next level as far as communicating. Now, it's two levels to this. OK, I've been through both levels. The first one is a customer service representative job, right? It's literally cashier, you know, phone representative, things like that. Something simple where people come to you, right? You ain't really selling people because when a person walk in the store, do you really got to sell them? As a matter of fact, when you're getting paid by the hour, you don't even care if they buy anyway. This is like, this ain't, I'm getting paid the same anyway. I don't care if you buy. So there's no pressure there when people come to you. When I was in the Navy, I had all retail jobs. I made thousands of cups of coffee for sailors, right? Talking about on a ship with 5,000 sailors. That's a lot of coffee, right? I worked in the ship store. That's a lot of faces. I mean, hundreds of faces every single day. Hey, how you doing today? How you doing today? How you doing today? And I didn't have no social anxiety. And I wonder why, because I was dealing with people back to back to back. So if you can get a job like that, that will really help you get to that next level. But it could be temporary. You ain't got to make a career out of it. But it will really help you. That's what drastically helped me in my, as far as my communication. Now, level two is this. A sales representative, meaning you are selling stuff to people, right? It's simple as, now this is hard, right? I would say a customer representative for an introvert, the one I previously spoke of, is like medium level. This is hard level because sales, now you got ego involved. Now you got self-esteem involved. That's on the line. Because when people tell you no, when you're trying to sell, it hurts. Ugh. I don't like door knocking, cold calling it all. All that is a tough game. I don't got doors slammed in my face. I don't got hung up on by people. I don't got disrespected by people that I didn't even know just be just because I was a salesman. People look down on those people. But <laughs> as all pain and all Bull crap does it builds character and make you stronger. So if you want to really go deep on this and you just want to just throw yourself in the deep end, you can get you a sales job and they're easy to get. It's funny. They're they're easy to there's a lot of entrepreneurs that need people to learn how to sell because most people don't want to do it. Like I can get a sales job literally like this. And I'm not bragging the ego. They pretty much let anybody in. All they want to know, can you sell? I don't care about your resume. I don't care about none of that. Can you adapt to this environment? So that's what being a salesman is even like a car salesman. I never did that. I was a real estate agent, right? Where I had to go get clients. Like I had to sit here and explain to clients why they should hire me. Right. I had to, like I said, cold call people, door knock people, random cold people like, Hey, um, like I was selling Verizon internet, right? Things like that. So these sales jobs as a salesman, car representative, people come to you, but you still got to close it. Right. Go to a car dealership. You already know how they act. They like, 
are you going to buy this car, <laughs> right? And you got to kind of like play it cool and stuff like that, but they constantly trying to sell the car to you. So this is a great way. This is like the fastest way to get better fast, if that makes sense. But it's also the hardest one. <laughs> so those are my tips for y'all to help you start conquering social anxiety because social anxiety is is something that we got to deal with people. And guess what? I don't care how introverted you are. You need some type of social interaction in your life or you're going to get lonely or you or lose your mind. Right. Me, I could say I'm so introverted and all of that. But after a while, I need to be around people because even I get lonely. So take these run with them. You could just start with one simple thing. Like I said, at the end of the day, all that matters is exercising your communication muscle through small interactions. It could be, like I say, asking people what time it is. Things like that. Just start doing that. You can start there. You ain't got to approach people and all of that. But when the opportunities come to you, start striking. You feel me? I'm Rasta White. I hope y'all enjoyed this episode today. Introverts, get out there. Talk to more people. Get that social muscle stronger, right? Do what you got to do because it's all about improving yourself. That's why I say you're in the hero. The hero inside you can do anything. You can do all things through Christ that strengthen you. Just keep moving, right? Just keep you can be all you can be, but you got to put in the work. Again, I'm Rasta White. You can check out some more of my episodes of the podcast, more of my introverted videos to help you unleash your inner hero. Thank you for watching.